Hello and welcome to the Alamo. My name is Tim Hicks, the Living History Manager of the Alamo. Um, traditionally, we'll be doing homespun here in May at the Alamo, um, but in light of things, we're going to be doing it online this year. And today, I will be teaching everyone um, the art of using natural dyes. We have here in the front are the natural dyes that people would use um, to dye their fabrics or their yarn, whether it be cotton, wool, or linen, um, to make reds or blues. We have things like indigo for the blues, um, or cochineal for red, or even hibiscus flowers for red or even, of course, classic beetroot. If somebody wanted to do maybe green, maybe grass or even spinach from their garden, for other blues and purples, they would have maybe blackberries or blueberries. Um, also something called orchil, which is a, a lichen, which is an algae. For browns or grays, they might use coffee or even walnut husks. Now in 1831, the most common things that you would use for dyes are indigo, which of course is the plant root, or even here in Texas, we're gonna have something called cochineal, which are dried insects to make the red coloring. Now in 1831, indigo would be priced about $2.25 a pound. And today's money, that would be just over $60 a pound. So very expensive. Cochineal in 1831 was about $4.96 a pound. That's a little over $154 a pound today. So most people couldn't use money to buy luxurious dyes or maybe they're living in rural areas like here in San Antonio. So they're going to use what they have in their backyard, even what they have in their garden. So for blues, that's why some people might have blackberries or even blueberries to make that pronounced blue color. Of course, if you use a lot of these, that color would turn to a more purplish color. Other more common colors that were used are green. Again, spinach was used. Even grass would have been used for that bright green color. Another thing that would have been very common is something called beetroot or even madder. Madder was 18 cents a pound, um, which of course is about a little over three dollars a pound. This would make a red color if they did not have that cochineal. Now, if people at home, if they wanted something to do um, with their children, um, of course, parents would have to help them with the boiling water and chopping up the vegetables, but you can dye things at home. Whether you have an old white t-shirt or maybe a, a white cotton or a linen napkin that you wanted to dye, find stuff in your pantry that you would think that would produce a basically a nice dye color. You could even use black beans um, to make a grayish black color if you would like. Um, but whatever you would have in your pantry, you can dye things at home. Now, to fix the dye onto the fabric, they would have something called a, a mordant or a fixative. This is basically going to be a chemical compound that makes that dye stick to the fabric. So this is called alum. They could use cream of tartar as well. Some other things that they would use is just regular salt or even regular white vinegar. So after the fabric is washed and rinsed, this will sit in that bath of alum or salt or vinegar for a good hour and let it steep. Then it's gonna be dried out. And then whatever dye bath they're gonna be using, that is gonna be boiled with some water and steeped in there as well for overnight to get that pronounced color. So over here we have the different colors. So we have the bright purple. This was used from making from blackberries. We have the reds from cochineal and the dark blue from indigo. And this brown is made from a mixture of walnuts and coffee. So the more you use, of course, the darker the color, the less you use, the lighter the color.